In this video, we will quickly discuss Microsoft uh, Data Platform. So here you can see different types of users, which is IT users, analysts and top managers, uh, business users, customers, security officer, and developers. So in your organization, you probably have different types of roles and different interests. Uh, and uh, let's start with this uh, lower bottom layer of data management and processing. So here we have different types of data sources. First of all, we have relational data sources, uh, relational databases, and uh, these databases can be handled in SQL Server, on-premises, or based on the virtual machine. It, if we talk about Microsoft Cloud, my Azure, it can be SQL database or SQL managed instance. Uh, SQL database will be uh, platform as a service, easy to deploy. SQL managed instance is more compatible with SQL Server. So usually, uh, based on relational data sources, uh, you want to have a data warehouse. And in this case, data warehouse contains all of the data of organization. Uh, and it can be actually created in Azure SQL Data Warehouse, Analytics Platform System, which is an on-premises system, or a SQL Server. Yeah, so SQL Data Warehouse is multiple massive parallel processing uh, architecture, which means that in this case, you have multiple instances of, of SQL Server working on the same data warehouse. Uh, Non-relational data sources. So here we can have data from social networks, from websites, from sensors, from different types of devices. Basically, it's no SQL data, which means that it's same as structured data. So the structure is not yet defined on top of it. And uh, data from different no non-relational data sources can be stored in the different uh, types of NoSQL storages, like, uh, let's say, blob storage, which is more compatible with uh, different other products, which you can see on this uh, schema. Uh, and alternatively, you can use data lake storage, which is more scalable and have, have probably more enterprise-ready features. Um, and soon it, it will be available uh, data lake storage version 2 with some additional capabilities. Uh, when you have data on in NoSQL storage, which is also basically you have multiple servers uh, where you store data. So data is evenly dis distributed and you can store uh, basically unlimited, especially when you talk about data lake storage, unlimited vo volumes of data. Based on the storages, you can actually execute different uh, types of NoSQL processing, which will be HD Insight, which is Hadoop uh, in Azure. So here you can have multiple flavors of H Hadoop, basically. Uh, most important will be Spark, uh, and s probably Spark with our server, machine learning server on top of it. You can also use Databricks, especially if you want to have more advanced development environment for your data scientists. And if you want to have simplified process of them actually using their models on top of different uh, clusters, so they can quickly create clusters in this environment. And also we can have, uh, you can use data like analytics, which is basically Microsoft uh, version of NoSQL processing. It uses USQL language, which is basically something uh, which has features of uh, Transact SQL and also um, C Sharp language in it, so it's very flexible. And also, you can you have f option of here. You can have an option of paying for execution and not for the cluster itself. How long you are keeping this cluster alive? Also, if you need uh, no uh, real-time processing, you can use uh, stream processing. So you, you you can ingest data in different types of hubs like Event Hub or IoT Hub, if you want to also have this uh, additional interfaces to different types of sensors, and also if you had want to have feedback loop back to your NoSQL data sources. Uh, alternatively, you can use uh, uh, multiple open source types of solutions for data ingestion. And then for stream processing, uh, you can use uh, Stream Analytics, which is platform as a service, or again, you can use uh, different types of open source offerings like Storm, for example. Um, data from here will go to the SQL, NoSQL storage, and then uh, obviously 
it makes sense to also define structure on top at, at some point structure on top of NoSQL files and then using uh, let's say Azure SQL data warehouse and Polybase engine you can actually ingest data move data to the data warehouse so in the data warehouse you will have basically uh, one source of the truth most I mean higher quality of data for your organization uh, to make this processing you can use different tools for information management first of all to transform data to load data into the data warehouse you can use tools like uh, integration services which is now available in data factory version 2 and also using data factory you can actually execute different uh, other uh, components of Azure other services like for example machine learning you can execute uh, data transformation using different types of NoSQL processing like Databricks, HD Insight uh, and also like when you transform data it's also important to have master data management solution which means that you can have reference data sets which you use to compare data from different systems here from relational si systems from other types of data sources you want to compare data with um, reference data sets which can be actually created using master data services uh, from SQL server alternatively can you also use partner solution which is called prophecy and uh, then data quality services you can use to deduplicate data to for fuzzy matching and other things then on top of the data warehouse which contains all of the data you can also build enterprise data models so you can do this using analysis service in Azure or SQL Server analysis services if you use on-premises solution basically here you can create tabular model and uh, uh, you can load most important information here and uh, this uh, analysis services uses it's optimized for analytical queries and uh, it uses vertipack engine to store data like in a way which uh, you store columnar data so it's already compressed it's already optimized for processing and on top of this uh, you can execute uh, you, you can create reports using power bi service so model is defined here using Power BI service you can create reports on top of already available data sets and then you can share these reports with your business users so uh, wh what I described here is usually implemented by IT right uh, if you want also to have analysts who will be creating their own ad hoc models then you can use Power BI desktop application it basically, it basically allows you to do all of the things from the bottom side of the slide which means that you can basically transform data using Power Query you can uh, create your model you can load data actually from different types of data sources you can create relationships you can create your data model additional calculations using data analysis exp expressions language and then you can publish it into the Power BI service and then you can create schedule according to, the, uh, to which it will be refreshed so basically using Power BI desktop and publishing it to Power BI service analyst can do the same basically work which, ca which can be done by IT the difference is that usually here you, you have much higher quality of data because IT will use all of this information management tools they will have uh, master data uh, sets uh, yes so difference is that high quality on the bottom side uh, compared to power bi desktop self-service bi but uh, usually implementing this uh, enterprise ready solution it really requires much more time right so in this case if you need really to create something ad hoc something custom then it's much easier to use power bi desktop and analysts business users can do it themselves uh, also when you need to create reports if you want to create paginated reports you can use reporting services and soon uh, paginated reports will be available in Power BI service and then 
Uh, obviously, Power BI services integrated with Office 365, with uh, services like Teams, like SharePoint. So you can actually publish, uh, you can create, for example, in SharePoint pages where you can embed uh, Power BI reports. And also you can publish specific, you can create specific tabs in Teams uh, where you can publish your Power BI reports. And people will be able to make comments uh, to this uh, reports. Yes, yeah, so this is basically how you make sh you can have all of different uh, additional options to share information, to make people communicate, discuss uh, re reports, and you can implement multiple scenarios here. Also, business users will be are able to use Power Apps to actually create custom applications to write data back to the uh, to your databases, which means that you can have this write back loop. So it, you can write data like forecasts or some type of uh, data entered by users, and then it can be reflected in the Power BI model in the Power BI service. Also, you can create custom flows, custom workflows using Flow, Microsoft Flow. Uh, so basically, you can uh, take data from data source, send letters when you received something. So you can create all of these different types of complex workflows. Um, many of the things actually implemented here, uh, can from the development point of, point of view, you can use Visual Studio and you, you have um, data tools in Visual Studio. So you basically uh, use Visual Studio to create an analysis services, tabular models, and um, some other things here. And you can also use Visual Studio to, to create uh, workflows using logic apps. And also you can create your custom uh, websites, applications, embedding your Power BI reports into these applications or websites. And in this case, uh, you do not need to have Active Directory accounts for your users. In this case, your application will, will actually handle how mm, you will map your accounts to the roles defined in the Power BI model. Another last very important component is machine learning here. So machine, for machine learning can be used to make predictions or to better understand data you have in, in your organization. And in this case, you can use multiple different services like cognitive services if you... Uh, so in this case, Microsoft already pre-built, uh, already available interfaces and APIs for different scenarios like custom vision API, where you can train this uh, model with your own types of images. Or alternatively, you can use just Vision API uh, if you just want to detect something in the image which is general. So in this case, we will use database uh, in our Bing search engine. Uh, if it's a data scientist, if you have more complex scenario, uh, you can use Machine Learning Studio. In this case, you can create your own model. You have the visual interface allowing you to, to create the model and basically to load data, to connect to data, and then to train the model. To You can use this interface to understand which model performs better, and then you can publish it as a web service and use in your applications. So Machine Learning Studio can actually be used not only by data scientists, but also by, bu by business users. Uh, if you need something more complex, then you can use Machine Learning Service. So in this case, you can actually create uh, models using Python, uh, or you can use Microsoft R or Microsoft Machine Learning Server on top of different types of clusters. And you can use also Databricks, and you can have Python code using multiple libraries in Databricks. So you, c you have a lot of different options here to create machine learning models. And this is very important uh, a way to enrich your data sets in your data warehouse or in your non-SQL storage. And uh, in the end, you can have more uh, additional knowledge about your organization. And the uh, last thing is security and uh, all of these data sets, uh, all of these data sets stored in NoSQL storage in, in data warehouse. Basically, you have uh, 
kind of similar types of protection. Most common is transparent data encryption, which means the data will be encrypted. And uh, depending on the service, you can have some alternative additional uh, types of um, protection. For example, in the blob storage, you can protect on the level of a folder in uh, analysis services or in Power BI uh, models. You can, well, you can define a Power BI desktop and then publish the Power BI service. You can define roles and role-based security ba based on uh, data in your model. And this will be covered in Power BI desktop discussion. Uh, that's it. So this is basically a very quick overview of my Microsoft Data Platform. If you have any questions, please post your questions below and I will have some additional recordings on specific blocks here and I will have decision trees dedicated to specific area of interest like, let's say, big data, which will be uh, basically um, NoSQL storages, uh, stream processing and also data warehouses in the case when you have big volumes of data. Uh, I have decision tree on machine learning uh, capabilities, on information management and on analytics. And some, uh, I expect to have some additional decision trees later. Thank you and see you next time.